Hello. Let's see if we can get the lighting a little better. How are you? Welcome. Ah, let's all take a breath. Let me know when you get here by making a comment in the comment section. I'll see if I can get my computer to work in real time with me. Uh, let me know that you're here. Just say hi, put a hand wave, something in there so that I can see. I'm really excited that you're here tonight. I know it takes us a few minutes to get everybody kind of engaged and online, but I'm happy that you're here. Um, my name is Jan Luther of Jan Luther Healing Your Grief. Hi, Cindy. Welcome. Also, let me know if it's your first time. That's always fun for me is just to see who's tuning in for the first time. And that will also help kind of direct how much teaching I do as we go through the process. And sorry, I've got a message popping up that I'm trying to wait for it to move. Oh, live, live, live. Anyway, uh, I have been doing energy psychology for about 20 years now. And there is no way that you could have convinced me back in the day when I first first starting that I would eventually be serving in the topic of grief. My real niche, my real passion was the ego tamer, being able to help you change your mindset and release your limiting beliefs about whatever was going on with you, which of course transfers very beautifully <laughs> to healing your grief because the mindset's about what could have, should have, all of that stuff gets really tricky. And so here we are after my experiencing lots of grief and loss with my mother in 97, who by the way was like right after my husband retired from the Navy and we were taking a big deep dive or a big huge leap into the real world without any kind of parachute, not knowing what we were doing. And then a few months later, my mother died, which was as always our mother, we losing our mother is really hard. But then a few years later, I lost my father at Christmas. And then as you probably all know, lost my son in 2006. And then three years later, lost a brother. Also at Christmas, by the way, I was thinking about that this morning. So while at the time I was thinking, you know, who doesn't want to go home for Christmas? As I think about it now, I'm like, wow, there's probably some stuff there that I could still work on. So. So glad to see you here. Hi, Linda and Michelle and Elizabeth. Yay, glad to have you all here. So what we do on these calls, these Facebook Lives, I keep calling them calls, forgive me for that, is I want to give you a sample of the power of energy psychology. Uh, in a second, I'll give you two or three tips on how you can participate and what you need to do to, what you need to know to participate. But the beautiful thing about energy psychology called emotional freedom techniques or tapping is that it's such a holistic approach. When I was first struggling in my early 20s with some things in my life, I went to talk therapy and a lot of times I'd come out feeling worse because I'm very empathetic and I'm very emotional and it felt like what I now call the dwell and swell, right? I'd go talk and talk and talk and every time I'd tell it, it felt like it got bigger and bigger because the energy wasn't going anywhere. Well, then I started becoming a, a Reiki healer, a hands-on healer, and I realized that that was really awesome, but if you're only treating the body and the energy in the body, the mind shift doesn't happen. That mindset that needs to be part of our evolutionary growth and light as a soul, so important. And then I started doing a lot of spiritual work and actually helping people uh, get past their traumas over either religious wounds or falling away from the religions of their, a couple popped in my head of that there were also cult experiences or whatever that might be that they were on a spiritual path and it no longer fit them. And then there was all this grief and loss about having to step out on their own and follow what their own intuition was giving them. So there's the body, there's the, the energy, and then there's the spirit. And all of those pieces were great, but I felt like something was lacking. And so when I found energy psychology, EFT, emotional freedom techniques, it was like everything clicked because it treats all of you. It treats all those parts that are so important for your full and complete healing. So give me some hearts, give me some love if this is making sense to you. If you're, if you're following and understanding what I'm saying here about how necessary it is for us to um, 
cre- treat all the parts of us and not just one vein. And my hope for you tonight, my one goal is that we're going to play with this process to quiet your mind, to soothe your nervous system, to shift your mind a little bit, and to basically, by the end of this hour, have you feeling better. Ah, oh, so lovely. So here's how we're going to do this. One of the things that I want us to focus on is the realization that when we're using this technique, we can all have a completely different story going on, right? We may have, I'm just going to off the top of my head, some of the stuff that my clients have been bringing up, a child that I am just really worried about. There's some kind of drama or trauma. So what you're going to write down is the who, might be you, (laughs) the what in a sentence or two, And then on a scale of you to 10, how distressing it is for you, this thought, this pattern, this worry that's going on. So let me kind of walk you through that. This child is a teenager who has um, a lot of challenges and the parent is just beside herself. So So logically, her mind is obsessed with this. How did it become like this? I feel guilty. What did I do wrong? So there are a dozen thoughts that she could contribute that are keeping her energy distressed, yeah? And then we would have her scale, use the sad scale to let us know how distressing it is. You could have lost a loved one recently. That's a whole separate kind of grief, one that we all totally get. Who, share the relationship, my mother, my brother, my auntie, whomever, and what is the top of mind thought? What is the ruminating thought about that? They, They were too young, it was, too ugly, it was so traumatic, whatever it was. And then on a scale of zero to 10, how much distress you have about that. Maybe you just had a relationship die, a divorce or a breakup, or it could be a friend that just has fallen away. All of these matter and all of these experiences cause us grief. So to participate, what I'm gonna have you do is yes, Thank you, Cindy. If the, if the words are coming up and you can't see me, swipe, I think it's swipe right, and the, and the comments will move out of the way so you can see me fully, because the first thing we will do is go through the tapping points here in a second. So go ahead and make your submission, and what I'll do is I'll pick one or two people, as many people as I can. That's my real goal. Um, I do have my computer over here, so if you see me looking, I can't read the comments and see me either, <laughs> so I have to move the comments and open my computer. Hi, Vanita. So who relationship don't you don't use names a a child of mine a relative of mine what distressed about their mental state their health my own health right it might be me that i have this pain that i can't get rid of and then on a scale of zero to ten what that is and then we will i will pick two or three people and here's the important part is when we start tapping it doesn't matter what their story is this will work for you if you tap along with whatever words i'm saying and with whatever their story is, because when we'll go back and retest, you're gonna see that your distress numbers come down. It's like a miracle. I gotta reboot my, or re um, load my computer, there we go. So, first the tapping points. The beauty of the tapping points is by stimulating the meridian points that they would use in acupuncture, we're sending messages to your nervous system to calm down. We take you out of the fight, flight, freeze response, which is the wide-eyed hypervigilance. Where's the pain? Where's the drama? Where's the danger? And we start calming the brain down. And when the brain starts calming down, the body starts calming down. And when the body starts calming down and the emotions start feeling soothed, you can now come back to your logical mind where you can look at this a little more objective. You're not in a state of fight, flight, or war. That's our goal. So over the years, I've used this process in a lot of different ways, a thousand and one different different issues. We're just gonna focus on one little thought, how it affects your body, how your body then responds with anxiety and stress and distress, which of course leads to disease, and we want to take care of that. So the points for those of you who are new, With your right hand, I'm not liking my light here, so with your, the hand you write with, you're gonna tap on the side of that hand. And go ahead and do this with me. Say the points as we go. This is either side of the hand, or if you want to do it like I was taught, 
in the palm of the other hand, this is called karate chop. We always begin with this point because this is the direct connection right to that limbic system and into your amygdala. So karate chop or side of the hand, top of the head, between the eyes, and I'm gonna walk you through every step so don't worry about getting the points right. I just wanna make you familiar if you've never done it. Side of the eyes, don't worry too much about getting the right spot because you're shaking, rattling, and rolling it. Under the eyes. Under the nose. Chin. We're going to tap five, seven. I usually do more because I'm saying phrases that you're going to repeat out loud after me. And as we're doing it, we'll tap until the phrase is over. Collarbones. Open those fingers. I do like using both hands because then you're getting cross energies on your body. And if you bring it right over next to your breastbone, you're getting, you're getting bonus points. How's that? Under the arm, for ladies, this is right along the bra line. And on the bottom of the ribs, take your thumbs and make sure that you've got them right up under your breasts and then tapping down along the bottom of the rib cage. So I try to remember to say those each time I go through, but you know what they are now in case I forget. So, and yes, your water. Thank you, Sissy, for reminding me of that. Your water is really important because this is an electro, uh, electric circuit thing that we're working on here. So let's pick a couple of phrases. Who do we wanna start with here? And again, write your phrase on your paper, even if it's different from everything else we're working on. If you tap with what I'm saying, it's gonna work. You're gonna find some magic in here. Okay, so let's see. Loss of comfort of my intact family unit. So I'm gonna to try to paraphrase that. Um, family, and on a scale of zero to 10, Susan, the, the family fell apart is what I wanna say because my mouth can say that. <laughs> okay, um, so on a scale of zero to 10. Cindy we have, I'm pretty much okay now, probably a four or five out of 10. Uh, a year ago, my son and I were living in our car. Oh, God bless you. Couldn't get an apartment. That's a lot. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly what the phrase would be, is just the anxiety of your son, if I'm hearing that right. So let me write that down, Cindy. And on a scale of zero to 10, uh, worried about my son. We're just gonna use that kind of generically. That might work for a lot of people. And I'm gonna put your first numbers as a four or five. And we do retest these as we go through. Um, who else has a contribution? I'm having a hard time reading my comments because my computer keeps scrolling. Yep, yep. Mm hmm. Okay. So I'm not able to see all the comments for some reason. They're not popping up for me. So we're going to start with a couple of those. Susan is an eight. Thank you, love. Who else? Who has an actual grief or a trauma? Uh, excuse me, a death loss type grief. And again, I'm not exactly sure why these aren't showing up. So let me see if I can get that. So think about your phrase. I want you to notice where that is in your body. When you think that thought, where do you feel the restriction or the anxiety or the sadness? Could be a specific organ like, oh, my lungs, oh, my kidneys. Today I was working with someone who's buttocks had been a problem and I was asking her who was a pain in her butt. Body is pretty smart. It'll do that. So keep track of that. Let's start with this one. It's a little generic. I like generic. Everyone tap and repeat what I'm saying. Even though I'm thinking this thought about how I'm worried about, and then fill in the blank, my child, my family, what's been lost, Sorry, I'm getting a message over here. I gotta move it. I deeply and completely love and respect my emotions. They are my spiritual guidance system. And I'm open to feeling differently. Hope that's a yes. Send me some hearts if that's a yes. Nice deep breath. Even though I've been having this thought, this worry, about my child, 
about this loss, about my family that fell apart. I deeply and honestly love and accept that these feelings are crying for love. And I'm willing to give it this time today to experience some of that. Nice deep breath. Thank you for the hearts. Let's, let's me know that somebody's out there. <laughs> Third setup. Even though I've been having this thought that I feel sad or guilty or inept or grieving or lonely or just freaking fed up, I deeply and honestly love and appreciate that these feelings are messengers and I want to get the message. Take a deep breath for me. We're going to move to the top of the head. These feelings of sadness between the eyes, these feelings of worry. Everyone take a breath, something just shifted for somebody. If your story changed, that's okay. Put some more stories in there. Side of the eyes, this worry, nothing I can do under the eyes. I'm pretty sure if there was something I could do and I knew what it was and I felt inspired to do it, I would have already done it. Can I get an amen? Knows these feelings of sadness and guilt, shame, frustration. Come to your chin, take a breath. Okay, so this is about the time when your mind might start saying, this doesn't work, I don't wanna do this, this looks stupid. So I'm being prompted to come back here, hang in here with me. Oh, elbow. Even though I might be new to this and it looks foolish, I don't think it'll work. It doesn't make sense. Or I just don't wanna talk about it. I deeply and completely love and appreciate that my body is one magnificent unit and I am incorporating talking about, thinking about, working my energy about this thing that has been on my mind. Take a deep breath. Even though just thinking about this situation makes me feel really crappy. I've used words like my family fell apart or I feel guilty or I'm worried or I'm fed up with or I'm hopeless. Please don't be hopeless. This is helpful. I deeply and completely love and appreciate that I am open to God or universe, helping me shift this now. Deep breath, releasing this negative emotion. Take a breath. Fingers between the eyes, releasing this bad feeling. Take a breath. Side of the eyes, releasing this horrible feeling. Take a breath. Under the eyes. I may not have a solution right this red hot minute, under the nose, but that doesn't mean I can't feel better. Come to your chin, releasing this anxiety or stress. Collarbones, releasing this sadness and grief. Under the arm, releasing the tension that I've been carrying. Bottom of the ribs, I know that disease is a literal thing. The longer I stay, in distress, the more my body cries for love. So let's take a breath. Retest your number. Give me new words if there's some new words. Yeah. If you have some other phrases that will work. 
Let me see if I can refresh my page. I know it takes a minute. There's always a time gap and I apologize for that, but I can't fix that. Hope you can feel me loving at you though. Yeah? And of course my computer wants to be really slow. So, and I just figure that I have this situation here where uh, my computer is not showing any of the comments. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull them back in here and see if I can get any. Yeah, I'm not seeing any comments. That's just so frustrating. Cindy says, I'm not even sure how I found you. It's a God thing. So go ahead and add your comments. Let me see if they'll pop up. I'm gonna close this down and start again. Sandy went from an eight to a four. Susan's using the word abandoned. Is that a new that came up, Susan? And if so, on a scale of two to 10, where's that? And Cindy, there was stuff about your son. Susan also isolated in the world. You got it, girl. You know how this works. Keep them coming. Yep, yep, yep. Feeling much better and almost cheerful for my sons and my future. Yay, Cindy. Susan, we're down to a seven. Cindy, do you have a number for yours? It was a, a four or five, I think. <laughs> I'm feeling blind here, you guys, because I can't see hardly any of the, co of the comments. So Elizabeth Lonely, um, raise your hand or do a wave if lonely applies to you. That feels like that might be our, our juicy one for tonight. And make sure you put a number, lonely and what number? I apologize that I keep poking you. <laughs> it's that uh, my computer's not working at all. Susan, yes, lonely. A 10. Oh, sweetheart. Okay, so we went to another story, so we're going to do lonely. A 10. Let's start together. Two or three for my son. I'm a zero. Cindy, good work. So if lonely isn't your word, tap along anyway. We'll see what spirit brings through for us. If it's overwhelm or worry about a child or worry about a situation, put that off to the side and stay with us on this. Even though there's a part of me that feels really lonely. I deeply and completely love and appreciate these feelings hurt. That thought hurts, but I am feeling lonely. Take a nice deep breath. Ooh, girls, uh, even though I've been feeling lonely, here comes some pings. This feeling that I have to do it all by myself. Raise your hand if that's you. Or this feeling that I'm trying to interpret this. Maybe that I've all, it's always been all on me. And that makes me feel lonely. I deeply and completely love and accept these feelings. There's a message in here. It's probably my spirit trying to nudge me forward and help me make more of my life. Deep breath. One more time. Hi, Charlene. If there's other phrases, ladies, put those phrases in here too about lonely or worried about somebody. Even though I've been feeling lonely and isolated, I'm gonna throw in a bunch of the words I wrote down. Maybe abandoned by a family that didn't care for me or that moved far away I'm open and receptive to the idea that maybe I could bloom wherever I'm planted. 
I mean, just like you're joining in here, we're making a group. The group of Healing Your Grief group, if you haven't joined yet, make sure you do. We have some great conversations in there and I'm planning on doing some fun things with that group soon. Top of the head, this feeling of lonely. To me, between the eyes, this feeling of lonely. I wanna just acknowledge it so it's gonna get a little repetitive, but that's the idea. Side of the eyes, this feeling lonely. Take a breath. Under the eyes, this lonely feeling. Under the nose, this lonely feeling. Track where that is in your body, this lonely feeling. Collarbones, this thought and story about lonely. Under the arm, this lonely feeling. Bottom of the ribs, I'm here with you all tonight. I'm not exactly alone. Top of the head, social media is amazing. Between the eyes, am I reaching out? Side of the eyes, am I giving love? Good, Susan, thank you. Under the eyes, am I holding out my love? Under the nose, have I got a wall up? Come to your chin. Am I telling myself this story about being lonely? And I'm not meaning that to be disrespectful. It's just there's a thing that happens in our brain there. Collarbone. But I'm not reaching out to anyone either. Under the arm, releasing this sensation and feeling of lonely. Bottom of the ribs, releasing this sadness and worry and lonely. Let's take a breath for a moment. And I want you just to tune back in to lonely and has it shifted at all on a scale of zero to 10 and use the specific word that I was using that worked for you. And of course, if you found it in your body, really focus on where it was in your body and how to move that. Or excuse me, if that moved. I can't write and talk at the same time. Uh, Susan, eight, seven, five. Thank you. Good tracking. How's your solar plexus feeling? Are you noticing something in that gut area, that willpower area, that punched in the gut feeling? Yeah, Susan, eight, seven, five. Who else? If it went up, that's okay. That helps me because then I'll know to go that direction. If it went down, awesome. Yes, good. Thank you, Susan. Who else? What's your SEDS number and what was your keyword? Lonely, worried about a child, grieving. It's better, good. Sandy, lots of releases. <clears throat> I know what that means. Um, and it went from a 10 to a four, beautiful. Lonely in my heart, 10, 10, 9. My family's all up north. Yeah, Elizabeth, okay. Um, so we're going to focus on that. So their family is away. Do you have connection with them? Is it is it a good? Miss Carrie, we had abandoned. Uh, seven and then four. That's a good start. So let's try this round. I'm just picking up on a couple of threads here. And again, keep tapping with the words I'm using. Your mind, your body will process. Even though I'm feeling lonely, it feels like my family is all far away or has abandoned me. Okay, this is for somebody, it may not be for all of you, to say it anyway. Maybe I have family or friends that aren't really good company anyway. Maybe I couldn't rely on them anyway. Maybe I need to grieve and do the work around that. Hmm. There's a couple of you that I'm getting pings for. I deeply and completely love and honor. Thank you for the feedback. That it's normal to feel like my family should be close to me. We're wired for that. We're tribal creatures. Nice deep breath. Thank you for the love. So even though I have this feeling that I'm lonely, that they're all so far away, unavailable, abandoned me. And it's possible that some of them have gone from this world. 
that some of them have just gone from my life, that some of them have gone far away, or maybe they're just not available the way I need them to be. Everyone take a breath. I deeply and sincerely love and honor my desire for deep, intimate connection with other souls. Top of the head, this feeling of missing others. Ooh, take a breath. I'm going to give you what I'm getting. I don't know who this is for. It might be everybody. Two fingers between the eyes. It feels a little bit like being homesick for heaven. Side of the eyes, homesick for heaven. Under the eyes. Cindy says, family is so overrated. Sometimes it can be. I'm pretty blessed, but I know some people aren't. Under the nose. The family that doesn't support me the way I need them to. Come to your chin. We're going to do a whole session in a couple weeks on hurtful things people say, so keep that in mind for a few weeks down the road. Collarbone. Maybe my family has no tolerance for my emotional needs. Under the arm. Maybe my family is tired of hearing about my physical pain or sickness. Bottom of the ribs. Maybe they're just not very strong and available. Top of the head. Doesn't matter the reason. I really deserve to feel connected and loved. Two fingers between the eyes. I want to soothe and heal the sense and feeling of loneliness. Side of the eyes, this feeling of nobody's there for me. Under the eyes, this feeling of abandonment. This feeling of nobody has the bandwidth to support me. Come to your chin. Nobody has the words that I want to hear collarbone. Maybe I just haven't found the right somebody's yet. Under the arm. Maybe my family isn't cracked up. Isn't all that's cracked up to me. Bottom of the ribs. Maybe it is and I just need to find another way to ask for what I need or offer. I'm not sure what. Top of the head. Releasing the sadness and disconnected feeling. Elizabeth saying, all of the above. Yes, love it when we're on track. Side of the eyes, this feeling of alone. Under the eyes. I wonder if this is my spirit nudging me to reach out to somebody and make a connection. Everyone take a breath. Under the nose. Okay, I'm going where I'm being told. We're gonna come back to Karate Chop because the story has shifted. Even though I don't have the energy to have a friendship, Start a friendship. Carry a friendship. Maybe I have a story that it takes too much energy to make a friendship. Anybody? Anybody? Give me some thumbs up. Something. I deeply and completely love and appreciate these feelings. Take a nice deep breath. Even though maybe I feel jealous of people who have a close family. I'm allowed to feel that way. Maybe it's not about my blood family. Maybe I could see that we're all part of a human family. Maybe some of my best and dearest connections can be someone I, that is not a blood relative. Take a nice deep breath. Even though sometimes I just feel so needy and like it's hard to create friendships. I really want to shift that energy. Just got a couple pings, so I got to write this down. Keep tapping. <laughs> My life has so much mm, trauma, stress, strain. I, I don't know who this is for, but I'm just giving it. Things that I don't think anyone else would understand. Or they don't seem to understand. Or they flat out told me they don't understand. Give me some love if that's resonating with anybody. Hearts or, or thumbs ups. Boy, that was just a huge wave, y'all. Top of the head. This feeling like nobody understands me. Two fingers in the eyes like they don't want to understand me. Side of the eyes like they don't have the bandwidth to try to understand me. Thank you, guys. It just lets me know that I'm on the right page because it feels one-way conversation here. Under the eyes. Sadness and lonely. Under the nose. Feeling like nobody's really there to support me. 
on your chin, feeling like it's hard to develop friendships, collarbones. Thank you for the love. Take a breath under the arm. Can you feel me returning the love? You're not alone, you guys, I'm here. That's part of my reason for doing this is I, I see so much need, bottom of the ribs, for community. That's why I started the group, is I realized that the hardest thing is to be in some kind of grief over a sickness, a special needs child, a child that you're terrified about because they're struggling in life, suicidal, OCD, and nobody understands, a grief of the loss of a loved one that you're gonna process different than anybody else in your family even. We need a community like Healing Your Grief, the, the um, group where you come in to share and we'll try to uplift and encourage. We'll try to give you a word of encouragement and send lots of loves your way. Yeah, between the eyes. I'm not alone. Look at this side of the eye. Spirit's showing me something here that this is important. Maybe this is why Spirit's been kicking my butt. I've been wanting to do this since April. <laughs> I'm finally finding a way to get it done under the eyes. God wants me to know. Universe wants me to know that I'm not alone. I don't know. I'm on a planet with billions of people. Ooh, this is probably for me, but I'm going to give it the way I'm getting it. Maybe I'm too peaky. Collarbone. Maybe I'm too judgmental. I mean, maybe my ego is making up all the rules about what they should be before they can be my friend. Yeah, this group is really loving. Bottom of the ribs. Maybe I'm the one who's being uh, standoffish or put-offish. Maybe I'm being too hard on myself and too hard on others. Top of the head. I'd like to switch and change my mindset about it's hard to have friends. Two fingers between the eyes. I wonder if everybody that I know feels the same thing. Side of the eyes. What if there are a ton of people? Ton. That's not really how you rate and number people, but ha ha ha. <laughs> Under the eyes. What if there are people who would just love to talk to me? Under the nose. This group is a great example. Come to your chin. It starts with a chat on the instant message. Collarbone. Then we can move to the phone or a face. FaceTime under the arm. I'm asking Spirit to help show every one of us here who's willing to step out of my comfort zone and reach out to just one person this week that I'm not alone. Bottom of the ribs. If this many of us are saying we feel lonely and we're in this group together, let's fix that, y'all. Top of the head. Let's reach out to each other. It doesn't have to be time consuming. Between the eyes. A personal message counts for so much. Side of the eyes. Everyone take a breath. I'm trying to figure out what this image is. It's trying to come in. This idea that group, that friends are hard. I don't know. Is that either they're too picky or judgmental or they don't want to hear my stuff. Cover your chin. This idea that family is hard to deal with. They don't want to be there and support me. Collarbones. It's okay. Under the arm. I'd like to be okay with the fact that people are telling me they're not available. Bottom of the ribs. I want to make myself available. Just one person. Just to one person. Top of the heads. Yeah, I'm being picky. Sandy says I'm being picky for friends and thinking they need to fit into my mold. Side of the eyes. Maybe I didn't realize that before. Under the eyes, when maybe the person that is really going to be an amazing friend is someone who's going to be very different than I am. Under the nose, or has a very different set of needs, life circumstances, etc. Come to your chin. I want to be, they're reminding me of the Martin Luther King prayer, where he says, Lord, take all that I am, all my gifts, all that my purpose is, and I'm, I'm ruining it, but help me use it for good. Collarbones. Everyone take a breath. Something just shifted. Hmm. Under the arm. Maybe I think that people have to have a problem so that I'm of value because I'll fix it. Hmm. Bottom of the ribs. Really great insights, Andy. Top of the head. Maybe I feel like I have to do something or be something special to get that love back so I'm not even trying between the eyes. What if I could change that perception within myself, side of the eyes, that all I have to do is show up and be a good listener, under the eyes, that if I can model reflective listening 
and be open to being vulnerable and sharing my stuff, I don't know. I might attract a whole different breed of people. <laughs> Imagine that. Come to your chin, releasing the sadness and the lonely, the abandoned. Collarbone. Maybe I've abandoned myself. Any feedback on that? Under the arm. Maybe I haven't really gone out of my way to be a friend, to ask for a friend. Bottom of the ribs. If you're a faithful person, as I am, God, universe, whatever, Heavenly Father, there's always a solution to the problem. A pain is meant for contrast to help us look for the solution and the healing. I really believe that. Okay, so the energy's still swirling a little bit. Let me see if I can get my pewter to work over here. I don't think it's gonna, it's like no messages are coming up, so. Write me your statement of the word or phrase and the numbers as they went along. For example, we had uh, my family abandoned me and left me alone and it started at a 10, went to eight, seven, five, and then we picked a new topic and it went to a 10. That was Susan's. So give me your phrases. Elizabeth says, I've tried. So we might want to talk about that in a different context or maybe a Facebook Live where we can get on and talk because it feels like there's more to that story. Um, I've tried to be friends. I've tried to get my family to part to be with me. Give me your phrases. Um, that hour went really quickly. Your phrases and your suds numbers on scale zero to 10. We used words like abandoned and lonely and no friends. Susan, alone in the world, went from eight to seven to five to a two. I love that. Susan, do you want to share what the reframe was, what the shift was for you? And then anyone else worried about my son, my nephew, um, my brother. Where did, I don't even remember what we said. That's the funny part about doing this work is when I get in this mindset, I'm so kind of straddling between spiritual energy and the earth energy that I can't remember. Uh, my family left after my dad passed. That went from an eight to a three. Yep. Uh, abandoned. Carrie, good work. Seven, four, one. Ah, good work. Elizabeth, lonely. Ten. Ten and eight. Okay. It's moving a little bit. That just tells me that there's story there. So I want to be really clear that we're doing really surface top level story stuff here. And when we work together one-to-one -one or in a group where we have like a couple of hours or we're doing a workshop, we dig really deep into one specific topic and we look for what we call aspects. All of my story points, all of my feelings, all of the memories, right, is, is we work really, really deep until these literally just start dissolving. Any of you that have done sessions with me and you can vouch for that, you don't have to do it right now, but I'd love a little testimonial about how this is really cool and I love the idea that you're going to feel better going to bed tonight. You're going to feel better tomorrow. But I also know that when we do the work really deeply and topic specific, it's really powerful. Um, kindred souls around every corner like Easter eggs. Susan says, I find kindred spirits around every corner like Easter eggs. We're going to affirm that. Um, we're going to do something different. I don't do this often, but we're going to do the temporal tap on your left side. And all you're going to do is on your left side, I know it's going to look different for you, but you're going to tap the negative and on the right side, you're going to tap the positive. This is really cool and helpful little tip, by the way, is you, when we're tapping, we're actually separating the brain hemispheres by tapping negative on the left side, which is all about logical and it's resistant. It is all about the why nots and the, the don'ts. And on the right side, it is positives. So we're going to, um, I'm going to use that affirmation like Easter eggs, friends around every corner. So we do it negatively. So on the left-hand side, over your ear, you're going to go, I don't need to worry about not having friends. I don't need to worry about all the friends I'm finding. I don't need to worry about all the friends that I'm finding. Take a breath. I don't need to worry anymore about all the friends that I'm finding. I think that's three. I don't need to worry about all the friends that I'm finding. And then we go to the right side. I do it about five times. 
I love knowing that there are friends around the corner everywhere. It's like Easter eggs. I find friends everywhere around, the, around every corner like Easter eggs. I find friends around every corner like Easter eggs. Everyone take a breath. I find friends around every corner like Easter eggs. So take a breath and just notice how it feels to think about finding friends around every corner. I love this, Carrie said, not only did my suds go down, but my perspective shifted. I got an insight into options and possibilities. Yes, hallelujah. And if you feel like sharing that later, y'all, I would love to have that later. But first of all, now that we've done the temporal tap, did you feel the energy shift? The left side is, I don't need to worry about the good thing. I don't need to worry about all the friends I'm finding. Notice it's got to be a positive on the end. I love knowing that I find friends around every corner like Easter eggs. Take a deep breath. Susan, did you feel that? Yeah. Whoo. Some of you are still doing it because I'm, yep. The temporal tap, very powerful. Not an EFT technique. I want to be really clear. It's not something we teach in EFT, but um, Donna Eden, one of my one of my fave coaches. I love watching her stuff. Sandy loved the temporal tap. So anyone else? And and I would love to hear after the the call. I'd love for you to post comments about what the shift was, what changed for you. Sandy, yes, the shift. Yes, give me some hearts, 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 y'all. Boom, 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 boom. Let's all take a breath. So I'm going to start a divine love transmission, which is really just a quantum energy. It's both massive and minutia. <laughs> of I want to shift. Awesome, Elizabeth felt a shift too. I want to shift the energy on a quantum. They're telling me to use the word DNA level. It must be a core inherited story or past life story whichever you believe is true that's awesome it's just somehow it's in my cells and right down to my dna that i have a belief that friendships are hard that i am abandoned that i'm always going to be lonely i want to shift that now on an energetic level so if you're open all you need to do is tell god universe yes i'm ready to receive and i'm going to start running the energy and i'm running it i'm running it around your heart there's somebody that has a real heart wall up Raise your hand if you can sense that energy is moving for you. There's so much sadness. They're showing me a pioneer type story, right? They're showing me covered wagons where some poor, I'm seeing woman, <laughs> it's freezing freaking cold, left her family, going to a who knows what, and probably experienced a lot of death and loss. So it's almost like the pilgrim song she was singing was, I'm all alone, I'm going and there's nobody there. Can you feel what I'm feeling? Hmm. Oh, so we're healing that in whatever form it's showing up for you, from your heart, every cell of your body, right down to your DNA, right down to your little tootsie toes. My hands are just humming. I'm being told to be still for a minute. Sandy felt the heart shifting, beautiful. So I teach this in the Ego Tamer Academy that I run. I want you to imagine for a moment what, we know we have Father God image, universe, female, or excuse me, male. I want you to think about Mother God. Don't need to decipher what that means to you. But it only makes sense to me that if there's a father and a son, there has to be a mother, right? I want you to imagine that you're climb climbing up into Mother God's lap. And you're just going to put your head on her breast. And you're just going to let that energy of her pink, holy healing love envelop you. Some of you, my very spiritual connected friends, are already seeing some things. That's, that's lovely. And I want you just to pour it out as if it was your mama. And if you didn't have a great mama, this is a perfect mama. And just feel the love. 
She has zero judgment. Nothing but compassion. Nothing but love for you. If tears come, that's awesome. If there's no tears but feeling in your throat, let's move that for somebody because I can feel it as it's like a lump in your throat. I'm going to try to do this with my other hand. There we go. Elizabeth is crying. That's good. We're moving energy, babe. So I'm doing a, a circle eight around that throat. This is for somebody. I'm not sure who. It's almost like that a lump in your throat that it got so big. Talk to Mama God. Let this beautiful energy that she's bringing through, which is why this feels very different and I feel very reverent right now. Usually it's Father God and it's powerful and I get hot. This is like humming. Um, Shannon, this is your part, babe. I'm bringing you in for your healing. All the things that I've taken on, all the ways that I felt like it's all been on me, this is for all of us. Let's give it all to Mother God tonight. There's not a single thing that should be pressing enough that at this time of night you need to worry about it for the rest of the night. Just give it all to Mother God. Mama, take this. Everyone take a breath. Make sure you're breathing, even if you're crying or not. Give me some feedback. I'm going to let it run for another two or three minutes here, but give me some feedback, what you're feeling and sensing, so I know which direction to go consciously. This is such a sweet energy. The picture that comes to my mind is Mama New Baby. Remember when you held your new baby or your new puppy? Or your new, right? Remember when you, that's the feeling I'm getting is that oxytocin, is that right? Oxytocin rush, rush. I'm healing lungs. Strong energy in your hands. Me too, babe. This is Mother God energy in all of us. A delightful surprise. Yay, Cindy, I'm glad. I'm healing plantar fasciitis in a foot. I, meaning Mother God, coming through here. Your lungs can be healed. Your foot can be healed. Your heart, they're showing me broken heart, can be healed. Your mind can be healed. There is a solution to your loneliness. Ask Mother God, Mama, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, to open your eyes to every opportunity to give love. There's a really cool thing. I think it was Randolph Wilkinson, who was in a really cool minister when I first moved here to Charlotte, talked about the, the carbon copy law. That whenever I give anything, an emotion, an attitude, the person that receives it is getting a carbon copy of it. I get it first. So if I want to feel love, I extend love and I get it first. I see how much love I could feel. If I want to feel connected, I reach out energetically, spiritually, vocally, and I get to feel it first. Everyone just gets a carbon copy of what I'm offering. It's a really cool principle. Giving and receiving are the same. All right. <clears throat> the energy is going to run for a few minutes after it feels like, but our time is running out. So much energy shot out of my heart so it can heal. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Right? It's just like far, far. All right. Give me some feedback. As we're closing here, what is the thought you're ending with tonight? I'm sure it's not the thought you started with. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? For some of you, your mind is just so quiet that there's no thought. Let's hold that. <laughs> Give me some feedback and send me some love here. Hmm. If you'd like to have personal sessions, I will be doing that for a few more months. Coming in 2020, I'm going to be reordering my services instead of 
sessions being the first thing I'm offering. It's going to be small programs and moving up to have personal sessions with me. After 20 years, my body's starting to tell me ah, that it's time to start serving more people in more generic and gentle ways. Elizabeth, I'm not sure what you mean by loss. You're feeling loss? Allow this to feel, allow this energy. Could you imagine allowing this energy to fill that gap of loss? Just for a minute, 30 seconds. Susan has a peaceful mind. Who else wants to, to share a comment as we close? Cindy, how are you doing? Who else did I tune into? Miss Carrie. How are you doing? My hands are still humming, so I'm going to hold it for a few minutes after we get off the... Off the I keep calling it a call. I know it's not a call. This Facebook Live. Know that I'm just sending you so much love. I will not be here next Tuesday for a Facebook Live. I'm sure I'll talk about that a little bit on the Facebook page a little bit. Um, I won't be next week, but soon after. Cindy's doing great. Yay! So as I close this, I'm going to invite you to tell me, does this work? We're doing through Facebook. We're not belly to belly. We're not eyeball to eyeball. But the energy works. The process works. The guidance that I get works. The guidance you get works. So I love some kind of little sharing, testimonial, feedback um, as I close so that I can go back and see if this is valuable for you all and how we might make it more specific. One of the things I am thinking about is doing topic specific each week. The energy is going to work regardless, even though we were talking about like 5, 10, 15 things. Yes, Susan loved it. Yay. Ah, can you feel me loving at you? Cindy, it absolutely works. Awesome. Cool, right? And again, like I'm saying, this is just such a generic sample. Oh, if you haven't done it before, make sure you find somebody to do some or hang out when we're going to start doing some little group projects with it on topic. Everyone take a breath. Filling your home and your heart. Filling your mind and your spirit with mama love. Let it fill the space that you're sitting in. Direct it to emanate out into your whole home. Um, help Cindy become a Mary Kay millionaire. If you can believe it, it's already done and I, yes we can. I love working with business owners because it's always some kind of false belief that the ego is holding based on tradition or my family or something. So yeah reach out go to janluther.com work with jan and there are some forms for you to submit for us to have a free 20-minute consultation to see if i'm the right fit and then absolutely carolyn says i'm doing good reflecting on the mindset shifts over the past week and especially the shift tonight when i started i was thinking about i've got to read the whole thing here uh, especially this year tonight when I started focusing on abandonment. It was about my brother-in-law. Oh, yeah. After your sister died. Mm -hmm. When I'd written a story, which is what we do, I was hoping that we would grieve together and it feels like he's abandoned you. Oh. Now I feel like he and I may already, may be ready for a deeper conversation and new connections. Carrie, that makes my heart so happy. I just want to cry. <laughs> That's lovely. You feel the love. I can feel the love. God bless you, everyone. Take this love to everyone around you. Like I say, I won't be here next Tuesday, but I'm planning to the week before Thanksgiving, and then we'll see if this is working and worth everyone's time. If it is, I may shift it to a Monday night and then just have it be every week if it's working on topic, or we'll do it however it works. Y'all take care. Please give me feedback. Remember to share. The video will work, even if it's not live. That's the cool part. Y'all take care. Bye.